Okay, we're live now. The show where I talk to musicians, DJs, record collectors and promoters about the music we love and live. And here we are, we're live with Hayden Thompson. How are you? You just uh, just in time got on the show and uh, I'm very happy to have you on the show. And uh, yeah, great to have you and, and Georgia. She's uh, listening or watching as well. So oh, welcome. Absolutely. It's awfully nice to be on your show. And uh, thank you for the opportunity. We, it's uh, very nice to talk. You're so far away. You know, so far away. <laughs> exactly. Uh, we never talked. I saw you uh, a few times live in, in Green Bay and uh, Las Vegas as well. And uh, always enjoyed uh, your voice uh, you have a really strong and, and beautiful voice is this is it given by your parents or did you start singing it very early very early very early yeah my <laughs> mom and dad uh, my dad used to play guitar like jimmy rogers you, you know the old jimmy rogers that yeah because in their day jimmy rogers was their elvis you know what i mean <laughs> and he, he, he liked to play i could never play it you know but my mom likes to sing and played the harmonica and and uh, so I grew up in the music uh, musical family, just the three of us, you know. But uh, so yeah, I've been singing a long time, so I've had a lot of practice. <laughs> cool. So we got uh, some people are tuning in already uh, from um, Sweden and uh, Belgium. And I know you have a special uh, relationship, can we, can we say, to, to oh. Sweden, yeah? Oh, my goodness. Been all over <laughs> Sweden and so many dear friends up there in Belgium and, and uh, of course, the UK and all the British Isles and lots of friends in Germany and France. I've had an opportunity with this little rockabilly thing to visit uh, a whole lot of countries. It's been wonderful. We've made a lot of friends. <laughs> So we, uh, we have some um, some questions already coming in. Don't make uh, it too difficult. <laughs> Stuart Turner, uh, he is from England. He uh, sent me a question. He was uh, saying, and also uh, five euro fifty one via PayPal, and you can donate uh, to uh, the address which is right above uh, Hayden Thompson's head. Let's talk at Randy Rich, Rich day. De and you can also use uh, super chats uh, if you want on YouTube. Uh, so the question is, um, he said um, his half brother played bass for you, Hayden, in the nineties, and he told me he remembers you telling him about when you went to watch Hank Williams live, and he would love to hear what that experience was like. So. Well, I, I don't I don't know how to answer that question because <laughs> I never had a chance to see Hank Williams live. So I don't I I really don't know I, I can't answer the only yeah. way I can see that I never had a chance to see Hank Williams wife live and so uh maybe something got a little confused there, but uh could be yeah. <laughs> and of course I I'm I'm positive that I never told him because <laughs> I'm not one of these guys that tell you little stories, you know. And but no, I was Hank passed away. I think mate was it fifty three? Yeah, January fifty three. Well, fifty three. Yeah. I was I was uh, thirteen, fourteen years old. So I really never had a chance to see Hank uh, alive. Believe me. So uh, so maybe. I don't know where the story got confused, but stories <laughs> okay. get confused sometimes. But anyway, what's yes. his name? 30 what's years ago. Uh, Stuart was his name. Stuart, yeah. well, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I couldn't answer your question better than that, but I'm trying to be honest here. So he would be a, f that's great. I mean, uh, yeah, I really appreciate that. 
a follow-up question for you. Um, did you see any of your uh, like country? I mean, you were a big country fan. Did you see any of your uh, of the guys you idolized or the, that you really liked? You recorded like "Going Steady" by Farron Young. Did, did you see him? Or? Okay, in the early days, in the early days back in the late '40s and '50s. Uh, they put packages together out of Nashville, like with with uh, Hank Snow and Ernest Tubb, and they put a half a dozen people together, and they go send them out on the road. So they would come through the country, and uh, they would play little theaters, uh, play churches, auditoriums, and schools and stuff like that. So I had a chance to see some of those people at a very very early age. You know, but uh, I grew up on country music, and um, on my new CD, I have my very, very first record from 1954 called uh, "Act Like You Love Me" and I feel the blues coming on, and and of course I had grown up with it, and uh, so that's that's what we knew in the South until the boy from uh, Tupelo came along. <laughs> And showed us how to sing rock and roll or rock. -a well, we call it rock and roll then. I don't know who put the rockabilly on it, but that's fine. But uh, we were all singing country music till Elvis came along and showed us uh, we could all do it. We just didn't know how to do it, you know, but he, yeah. he, he showed us how to do it. You know? so <laughs> thank, thank, thank you so much for that, you know, Elvis. Thank you. And um, yeah, talking about rockabilly, because many uh, people I talked to from uh, who were playing in the 1950s said they they didn't hear the term rockabilly back then. But then you have songs like uh, Rockabilly Gal, um, um, Rockabilly Boogie by Johnny Burnett, or even Rockabilly by, by Guy Mitchell. And so was it maybe a regional thing or do you know anything mm -hmm. about it? Well, I I cannot honestly say where the word Billy, Rockabilly came from. I thought it, maybe somebody in, in England put the Billy on there. But we mm -hmm. just called it rock and roll. But the song Rockabilly Gal came out of California. And it, uh, that was 57. I cannot remember the people that wrote the song, but uh, uh, I was working with Slim Rhodes and his band at the time. And that's when uh, uh, at Sun we recorded the song "Rockabilly Gal," and uh, and uh, so. But as far as knowing exactly where that song came, uh, where the word came from, I don't know. But somebody tagged it, you know. But okay. now, are, you, are you familiar with uh, Slim Rhodes and his band? Yeah, I got, I got a his uh, Sun Forty Five. The Do what I do and, and take and give. I think that that's a fantastic well, song. <laughs> okay, now I, got, I must show you this and your and your and your people. I hope you can see this. I put I'm you on, at, on on the big screen the, here. On the big screen here. This yeah. is this is Slim Rhodes in the white hat. I'm trying to, and uh, they always <laughs> included <laughs> rockabilly singer in their band, and that's. 1957. I want you to check out those shoes. Can you see the shoes? Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> oh, I bet, I bet you, I bet you would love a pair of those shoes. <laughs> <laughs> That's an amazing But picture. <laughs> it was a, a a great experience to work with. They were all older, and and I'm just doing a whippersnapper at that time, and uh, but what a great experience, and some of the greatest people I've ever. Ever know Slim Rhodes and his band. Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. Got another question? <laughs> yeah, I just um, I have different sources here for questions. Well, wait a second. Got another one coming up from Axel. He's from Belgium. Axel. Um, can you tell us about the atmosphere with all the other talents at Sun Records? Um, who was your closest friend there and who was the most difficult guy to deal with? <laughs> That's probably a hard question. Oh, but, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to talk about difficult guys. Yeah. <laughs> we were all young and we, yeah. knew, we knew everything, you know. We were smart. We were all smart, you know. 
But anyway, some of my closest friends were Billy Riley, Sonny Burgess, Malcolm Yovingson, Bill, uh, Jimmy Wages. Uh, of course, we'll talk about Roland later on, which was a dear, dear friend. But uh, when I came to Sun, I'd been touring with, uh, I came right out of high school and uh, we had this rockabilly, we had a little rockabilly show after, uh, you know, Elvis hit with That's All Right Mama and a few records. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, I was like so many other artists in the South and Southwest, Southeast. We had our little radio shows on this uh, locally and we played little dances and this and that during the week. But when he came along, we all, thought we could sing rockabilly and rock and roll. And uh, so uh, I traveled with the movie Rock Around the Clock. I told you this before for about eight months and we played the theater circuit. And it was just, uh, we would go, we carried the movie with us mm -hmm. in, in, the, in our, the, the trailer, the, the movie <laughs> itself, we carried it and we, we played the theater circuit and we'd go into town and and uh, we would do a show. They'd play the movie. We'd do another show. So that was our show. I did that for eight months. Where in Memphis, you had people like Sonny and Billy and Norval Feltz and mm -hmm. Orbison. And by that time, Cash and Presley had moved on. and and um, But they put say five or six people in a package they called it so they put them on the road but as far as myself i just had the movie and my little band and we uh we did that for about eight months so so did you that's have the, how i got to sun records okay did you have the projector in the in the trailer too did you have no, did no, you no, have no. to show no, the movie no, 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 no just just the movie no. itself yeah just the, just the yeah. movie and the big reel yeah, so yeah. if you went to see a movie in the old days, you got the projector up in the up in the top of the up in the balcony, you know. Yeah, yeah. We would do a live show. They would show the movie Rock Around the Clock, and then we would do another show. And so that was the package, my package. <laughs> so I I really never toured with these guys at that particular time. Later on, I worked with Billy Riley and a uh, couple of other guys, but uh, there's all kind of press that says uh, that Riley and Sonny and myself just tore the South apart. Well, that's just not true. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm telling it's you. Still, it's still there. <laughs> I, I, didn't work with, I didn't work with Sonny Burgess till 1990 up in New York, and we, we, we've had a lot of laughs about this, but... Uh, Sometimes people get a pencil in their hand and and they uh, go a little crazy because they think they know a, a little bit more than they do, you know. But uh, yeah, I'm just <laughs> shooting you straight today, you know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. And uh, did you did you play mainly uh, theaters or did you also play like um, auditoriums or um, high school? Uh, oh, high well, that, or, okay. The, the theater, uh, the auditoriums and high schools and that was before I uh, went to Memphis and uh, cut Fairlane Rock and Blues, Blues, Blues and You're My Sunshine and Mama, Mama, Mama. I uh, did that in 56. But prior to that, it was just locally like we all did. And yeah. they will, you know, all the guys that would still around or have left us will tell you uh, we all had our little local radio shows and we played those little theaters and schools and stuff like that. And, and it was a bit, it was a big deal at the time, you know, we're talking 55 or 54, but, uh, anyway, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Cool. Um, so we got some, uh, some other questions then later, uh, when you came, um, like you play until in, in the 60s as well and uh, some country music and I just listened to your great uh, Cap uh, uh, album 
And you told me you even played on, on the Grand Ole Opry then, yeah, in, in the right. mid 60s. How, how was me, that? That was still at the Ryman, yeah? Let me take you back now. Once, uh, uh, one, I, I was at the Sun in 56, and I cut like a total of nine songs, I believe, that were stuck up on the shelf, other than Love My Baby. We want to talk about Love My Baby since we have your audience out there, but I want to tell that story. But um, um, I, uh, I, 57, I worked about uh, six months with Slim Rhodes in his band, and that's when we cut Rockabilly Al. Okay? And, uh, and nothing was really happening for me. And, uh, and a guy in Chicago um, had opened up a club and said, uh, he, ca he called me. As a matter of fact, he was from Mississippi. He said, how about coming up and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll put something together. I said, well, I'm not doing anything, so make a long story short. I made the trip to Chicago and, <clears throat> excuse me, 50, 50, uh, 58, and um, got acquainted with everybody, and I moved to Chicago and... Uh, like May of 58, put a band together and I had a club called Tally Hall, about 30 miles north of the city of Chicago. And I worked there for about uh, four years, four or five nights a week, three piece band. I was on playing piano, had a guitar player by the name of Travis Westmoreland and a drummer by the name of Bob Miller and Danny Webster. And that's, those four years is when I cut Brown Out Handsome Man, Kansas City, Call Me Shorty, uh, 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 Going Steady. We cut those demos in that period of time. And that took us up to about 62. And then um, things kind of closed down a little bit, and I got out of the business. And all of a sudden, country music started to, to take on and country music's had it's been a strange thing over the years it can be hot for a, four or five years at that time and then so, something would replace it hmm. and take you back to the time in early 50s when webb pierce and Farron young and and hawkshaw hawkins all of those people were number ones all of a sudden here comes elvis and knock some right out of the box, you know. Okay, so that that was that period. Now you, you go along to, you move on up to another 10 years, and all of a sudden, country music starts to take hold again. And you had people like Buck Owens, Merle Haggard, yeah. and uh, some of the guys from the West Coast, Roger Miller, uh, just so many people that started make started making a little inway into country music. Mm -hmm. We had a major station in Chicago called WJJD that uh, decided they would switch over to country music. So they did. In the meantime, um, these guys in Whalen, I, I don't want to forget Whalen. He was a very dear friend. One mm -hmm. of one of the We're talking about so Waylon anyway, Jennings here. Yeah? Waylon Jennings, yeah. yeah. So, but he was one of the people that I want to include with Merle Haggard and and yeah. Buck Owens and uh, Roy Clark and all the people from Hee Haw, to be honest with you. <laughs> so, <clears throat> this radio station WJJD, uh, they opened up a club here in Chicago called the Ribley Club, and uh, they had a staff band, and uh, Friday and Saturday night. And it, it was a big place, held about 1,400 people. And um, so um, every weekend, they would bring in one of these people like Waylon or Buck mm -hmm. or Roy or some, uh, Merle for a, a guest weekend. You, you follow me so far? Yeah. I'm yeah. trying to make this <laughs> as easy as Should I turn my collar up or no? Should I leave it I have I have my collar down, so I think well, you right. should take that. <laughs> so you're making me uncomfortable. You got that tie on. 
But anyway, <laughs> I had a chance to work with all these people and and got to know some of them fairly well. Uh, a few, but not too many. But anyway, this one particular weekend in in 66, because I worked there for about a year and a half, they brought in Mr. Roy Acuff and his man for the weekend. And at, and at, the pres at that time, now you got a picture. I was driving bus for a living. I was a, a city mm -hmm. bus, you know. You know what I'm talking about? A bus. Yeah. You, you yeah. come home and go to your studio or your home. <clears throat> and uh, I brought him in. And, of course, every weekend, of course, I had I cut a little thing, a little demo thing called 1688. And here we go again. And I'd cut that in early 66. And, uh, and WJJD was was playing it, and they referred to Hayden Thompson as the singing bus driver. You know, Eddie Arnold, <laughs> Eddie Arnold was a, a something plowboy or cow. I think it was, you know, ever they, they stuck nicknames on people back yeah. in those days. Remember yeah, that singing fisherman. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, and uh, so I was being accepted very well at the Rivoli. And uh, uh, try to move along a little faster here, but they had been playing 1688 on the radio, and and uh, <clears throat> at this Ribley Club. So they had Roy brought Roy Club in one night weekend, and now I got to tell you, I got to say this, and I'm going to be very honest with you. P appearing on the Grand Ole Opry was not one of my big dreams and i know there's people out there that would mm. give that would have given their left nut in new <laughs> to sing on the grand Ole Opry, and it yeah. was just it was just not my thing okay <laughs> anyway <clears throat> excuse me after this show that weekend mr rico saw the response every weekend i got the i got such a response from the crowd and uh he approached me he said would you be interested in coming down and doing the grand Ole opry and i said well okay fine <laughs> you know not jumping up in the sky and the whole bit and you know boy i'm gonna do the grand Ole opry you know because mm -hmm. it had never been a dream of mine and uh, anyway, to make a long story short, uh, he said, now, I'll go back to Nashville and I will talk to my people, which all this is a story I've told so many times. I can talk to my people and see if we can bring you down for a guest, guest appearance. Now, I don't know if you know how big Roy Akef was at that time. He was like the godfather of country music. Still in the you, 60s, yeah? yeah? Yeah, yeah, we're talking yeah, 66. Yeah. About two weeks later, I get a call and they said, would you like to come down and do a couple of songs on my portion? I'm sure you have listened to the Grand Ole Opry. You know, they'll have one artist who'll do 30 minutes. Yeah. One artist doing that for 30 minutes. And he said, would you like to come down? Sure. You know, I'm uh, 28 years old. And, you know, I got the world by the tail and half stupid, you know. <laughs> What's going on? But anyway, I'm getting a lot of record play from WJJD. And I went down. And uh, and uh, he, he had a show say eight i can't remember the exact time mm. eight to eight thirty but had me on for one song on his 30 minute program and then they had somebody else and later on he had another 30 minute show and the second second, second song i did was grant was a uh, boots are made for walking well at that time 
the rock and rock and roll was not very big on the Grand Ole Opry. Yeah. But I, I was doing it at the Rivoli in Chicago, and it just tore the house apart. And mm. you know, it's a Nancy Sinatra song. So I, I did this thing, and and it went over great. So anyway, that was my first. So that's how I got to the Grand Ole Opry, and uh, went on to make three, two more appearances. Had a mm. third one booked, and it happened to be the weekend that String Bean uh, was unfortunately murdered. Him, and, he and his wife, and and so they canceled me out. But but so I had three appearances. But that was sixty six. Okay, yeah. and uh, in uh, in in the meantime, in sixty six, I had cut this new album that you mentioned called. Uh, 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 Hayden Thompson, Cap Records. It just played all over the world, all over, and no promotion. It was just good enough to get played, sold no records at all. So <laughs> anyway, that takes you through that period. At that point, uh, I worked uh, another three or four years in Chicago with that publicity and JJD stopped playing country music and I started playing little dinky nightclubs around where they, if they didn't like it, they'd throw two beer bottles at you, you know, the, with a screen and <laughs> like in Blues Brothers. Did, but, did, you have uh, the chi chicken, did you have the chicken wire in well, front of the stage? <laughs> there were places where they had chicken wires, you know, just like the Blues <laughs> Brothers, but well, whatever. And I finally yeah. told my wife, Georgia, I says, if this is the best I can do, after all this time, from 54 up to uh, the end of 60, early 70s, I said, it's the best I can do, I, I'll, I'll just quit it because I just had lost interest. Cause. And yeah. then, out of the clear blue sky, I went through about nine years of uh, uh, wife and I, uh, George and I, were raising our young son. Driving limo, she was a secretary, and we uh, scratched out a living. And oh, uh, that clear blue sky! I got a call from a guy called Willie Jeffries over in the UK. He says, "You know, at that time they'd been bringing over people from the Sundays, and uh, you know, like Eddie Bond." Uh, hmm. uh, uh, Norval Phelps, a number of people, you know, that really yeah. didn't have that big hit. And, uh, but they would bring them over, pay your fare over, feed you and put you in a nice hotel. You bring home a few dollars. No big deal. Did you, did you hear it? You, did you hear that from Willie Jeffries or did you talk to uh, no. some of, of the guys? Uh... Willie had some, I, I can't forget Eddie Bond. Hmm. And Joe to uh, Joe Pooby, but Eddie, because he called me in '81, wanted me to come over, and uh, and at that time, uh, as I mentioned to you t two weeks ago when we talked, at that time I'd gotten older, lost a little hair, got a little grayer, you know, and lost a little confidence, and uh, just refused to go. In the so the next three years he had like Eddie and Joy, Norval, Sleepy Libby, people that had been there and said, if you ever get a chance to go, you should go because you won't make a lot of money, but you will enjoy it and it'll be like turning back time. Mm -hmm. You follow me so far? Oh, yeah. 80, 84 comes along, I get another call from Willie Jeffers and Dave Travis. We all know Dave. You know Dave? Yeah, I know him, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, Dave was the guy that had the band that backed up all these guys they brought over, and it was a ritual that when they'd bring them over, they would uh, record an LP, you know, on whoever mm -hmm. they brought over. He had his own band, the, and uh, good musicians, and so that was the routine. 84, uh, it, 
they call me back. Willie did and says, uh, we'd like to invite you back again. So George and I talked about it. We took our young son out of school and looked at each other and said, we'll never get to Europe any other way except for this little rockabilly thing I did. <laughs> and so we made the trip. Did about four shows, five shows in England, two up in Sweden, and uh, did one in Holland, the Eindhoven Festival, and that was 84. I came back to Chicago. Boy, was I flying high, and I was only 46 <laughs> years old. You know, boy, 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 what, what just happened, you know? Yeah. So since that time, one thing led to another, and since that time, I've had a chance. Here it is, uh, 2021, and up to uh, 2019. Uh, last year, uh, 2020, we didn't go, but I would not tell you how many times I've had a chance to make the trip to Europe and uh, the UK and Isles and Sweden and so many records, so many records with Charlie and and uh, Sanjay and and then got hooked up with, uh, well, I'll, I'll say that for a minute for Blue Light, but uh, uh, all these years and um, we've made a lot of friends. It's been wonderful and uh, it, it, it was, but I got, got the old confidence back, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Old By the confidence. way, wait. We mentioned friends uh, Anders Anders Backpack from Sweden. He is he is watching us and Who's he says that? hi. What's his name? Uh, Anders, the bass player from uh, Wildfire Willie and the Ramblers. Mm. Oh. You remember him? <laughs> oh Lord, you mercy! What a bass player! What a bass player! How are you, buddy? <laughs> Our Georgia sounds are best. We uh, yes, yes, yes. Wildfire Willie's one of the. Uh, we worked so many times with these wild far and his boys and, uh, and, uh, Oh, what great memories up in Sweden with, uh, with J O and the boys and, and J O Erickson and, Oh my goodness. You, you're bringing back memories, but hello, my <laughs> friend and say hello to all the boys. Will you please? Yeah. Please. Uh, they hear you. <laughs> Good. So there was uh, some more question about the, the, the 50s. Um, do you remember what kind of gear you had for, um, for, for when you played those shows? What, what kind of amps or guitars did, did you have? Did you play acoustic guitar all the time? Did you play electric as well? Or? <laughs> no, we didn't have the, uh, the uh, what, well, they call those things when they shoot off the stars and all this stuff. We had one <laughs> big amp that the guitar played. No amp on the 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 um, my rhythm guitar and just the bass. No, you cannot believe how simple it was. You cannot. <laughs> and we made a lot of music, but the guitar players only one that had the amp. <laughs> And then there's another uh, question from Adam. Uh, did did you write uh, cheese and crackers for Roscoe Gordon? Cheese and crackers. Oh my goodness! Well, just <laughs> now here, my wife has. I, I asked her this morning to pick out some pictures. Come over here, honey. And first of all, we, I want I want to show you. I, I first met. Okay, we're talking about Roscoe Gordon. Yeah. Here. Yes. Right here. Can you see this? Oh, uh, wait a second. I got to. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm, bringing, I put, I'm trying I put, to bring it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You got there it? Go. I met yeah. Roscoe in, in, uh, <laughs> in 86. Okay. You got it? Roscoe yeah. Gordon. Now, the, the way Cheese and Crackers came about, we had been working on that song. Now, I've lost you. I see myself. Where are you? Get, I'm back. Okay. I just wanted to show okay. the picture. I'm still okay. here. <laughs> All right. Very good. Um, I was working on that song with uh, Slim Rose's band and couldn't get it right. And I don't know what happened. It just didn't, wasn't turning out. Jack Clement mm. was running the board. 
And uh, we finished up, and I left the words on the piano. <laughs> okay, you ready for this? The next day, uh, Roscoe had a session, and he came in, and he was had his songs from what they tell me, I wasn't there. <laughs> and But my song was laying on the piano, you know, the words. Yep. And uh, make a long story short, he says, <clears throat> he says, where'd your song come from? And Jack Clement said, well, Hayden was working on it yesterday and and that uh, we couldn't get it going. So he said, well, let me try it. So that's... <laughs> How she's incredible. <laughs> so he put he put his touch to it, and yeah. So <laughs> so did you, did you like his version? Oh, did you like his? Loved it. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Over, I like it too. Yeah. Over the years, I uh, I've tried to do it, but I do it in my own style. But um, you know, not as uh, not as good as he did. But he had his own style and. Actually, was looking forward to working with him in <clears throat> New York, I believe, in early nineties. And um, bless his heart, he passed away a day before he's supposed to make the show, so something like that. But oh. I only met him the one time here in Chicago. You know. But anyways, it's memories, you know. Amen. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Adam, Adam, the guy who sent uh, the question, he says uh, thank you so much, Hayden. So yeah, Adam, really appreciate. It. Adam, he sent the question about uh, cheese and crackers. Okay. Uh, and he, he really liked the, the answer. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm trying to tell you just just the way it happened, you know. And yeah. And again, I just want to remind you, um, you can uh, always ask questions by, uh, via Super Chat on YouTube. And also you can um, donate something with um, PayPal to let's talk at wendyrich.de and just um, attach your question and yeah, we'll be happy to answer it. So here's another one from from Karl. Uh, he's from Austria, and he w wants to know: Have you ever seen the young Elvis in uh, 55, 56 live? All and right. I'm gonna what be was the special happy. deal about him? What do you think was special? Oh, about I him? don't know. I guess he was just special. <laughs> I guess he was special from day one. And <clears throat> like I said before in our early part of the interview, we. We'd never heard anything like this before, you know, because we were all singing country music. I used to, and he used to play little theaters, uh, churches, auditoriums, and and at that time he would be with like a, a, a couple of people I remember: Jim Ed, and Maxine Brown, the old country, the country act. I shouldn't say old, but they were a country, very popular, and. Uh, Hank Snow and some of those Nashville people like um, Oni Wheeler and, and uh, oh, but yeah. they would play little places and I would go see him. I played all over the country in uh, uh, 54 and early 55 and, and I would go see him every chance I could and uh, and uh, of course, ever you go backstage and nobody back there talking to him, and and I chatted with him many many times, and uh, of course he was nineteen, I was sixteen, never got a chance to know him personally as a friend, but just amazed with his talent, you know, and it was just something different. And we in the South, we back in those days, it took like with Sam Phillips, he, he would take every one of Elvis's records and he would not put another one out until that one had sold its limit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So in other words, not a record every week, it was maybe a record every three months or something like that, but he got everything he could because he was a, he was a businessman. He didn't have a lot of money and uh, something was hot. He put his money behind it. And uh, but uh, but um, like I say, yes, I I knew him, and he was like family. But uh, but I didn't know him personally, you know. It's, it's another question from Dylan. Uh, he's from England. He plays piano. He's a big Jerry Lee fan. 
and um, he <coughs> wants to know was the Fallon Ford your dream car back in the 50s and Which what? what are you your, saying a fa Ford, fa Ford Fairlane, was that your dream car back in the 50s? Well, yeah. actually, that's 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 what we, my mom and dad bought as a family car, a 1956 Fairlane Ford. It was red and white, and we had a red and white trailer that carried the instruments and... Uh, and hooked behind it. It was a small trailer, but it carried the instruments in our clothes. And on the side of it, it said Hayden Thompson. I got a picture. It was red and white, just like the car, and uh, and uh, carried on the uh, the road. And uh, on the side, it said Hayden Thompson, the original Rock and Roll Review. And on the very back, it said You ain't nothing but a hound dog. <laughs> We had lights over it that so when you turn on the headlights on the car, you would <laughs> you would see. Now I'm going to hold this picture up, so, and you, on this picture you'll see Billy Riley, Roland James, and Jimmy Van Eaton and Marvin Peppers. But this was what it standing on the back of the car. Let's see if I can bring it up here. See that you ain't nothing but a hound dog. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was quite a sight to see in '56, you know. But uh, but uh, did you, yeah. Did you that, paint that, that yourself? Did did you did you write that yourself, or oh, did you have yes. somebody? Can you imagine yeah. how much time it took to write <laughs> Airline Rock? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> probably thirty minutes. You know, <laughs> uh, you mean the song? Yeah, the song. Okay, <laughs> no, yeah. I, I mean. I mean, did you ride you in nothing but a hound dog on, on the trailer? No, 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 no. That no. was the promoter. He he oh, okay. put that. He he designed the trailer. Yeah, but I do want and uh, here we. I've got to show you this. This is something very rare. This is wow. Yeah, the brochure from from Phillips International when he started his new label and put out. I'm trying to get it here. Announcing mm -hmm. a new world entertainment, Phillips International. And uh, this is in 57 when he released uh, Love My Baby, Barbara Pittman, uh, Buddy Blake, and Bill Justice. He to uh, subsidiary of Sun. You follow me? And uh, so he put out that brochure and... Uh, and uh, nice stories about each one of us, you know, but uh, so that was there. But uh, do you remember Barbara Pittman? Yeah, yeah, let sure. Let me show you. Uh, look at look, what a nice, pretty lady she was. I'm holding, there she is. She was on the the first release of, uh, of uh, Phillips International. And then uh, I got to show you this. I've got, you know oh, who yeah. this is. You I, see know Roland, is. I see Roland James there. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Our dear friend. You met Roland, mm. right? Yes, like every time I went to Memphis, I went down to <laughs> to the Phillips studio and, and said hi to Roland. And then we, we talked and he had <laughs> such a great uh, sense of humor. And, and also he was very interested because I'm from East Germany. He yeah. always wanted to know how it was like back in East uh, East Germany, and so he, he, I think I was telling him more about East Germany than, than he was telling me about Sun Records. <laughs> yeah, no, you had to, you had to open him up a little bit. I want to show you another photo here that you might get a kick out of. You know who that yeah, is? The, yeah. Oh, sure, yeah. everybody knows him. Yeah, <laughs> the yeah. killer. Yeah. 19, and of course, nineteen. Uh, 66 at this Rivoli club that I was telling you about. And then here's a little photo. Here's a little piece. Von Theater. My, uh, that was a little place we were all playing in Boonville, Mississippi. And that's where the record, the, uh, the uh, Von Record Company came out and mm -hmm. cut my first two songs on it. And uh, I just appeared on the if you can see there's Johnny Burnett is a special artist and yeah it was a Friday it was a Saturday night show 
and I want you to check out the admission. 50 cents for adults, <laughs> 25 cents for children. But anyway, it was a little thing in Boonville, in my hometown. It was like a miniature Grand Ole Opry. Went out over the radio, uh, maybe a 25 mile radius, but mm -hmm. people came from Memphis. Pro Burnett's, Lloyd McCullough, uh, the Burnett brothers, Eddie Bond, I'm sure I'm leaving Charlie Feathers. I'm, yeah. leaving, you know, but as a guest artist, and I bet you uh, they couldn't have made, uh, barely made gas money. To, it was like 120 miles away, but uh, uh, it was a big deal. Now here, do you remember the name Lloyd McCullough? Yeah, I'm gonna. He, we played he, a song by him actually. Uh, it's called "I'm Gonna Love My Baby Now." I don't know if you do. And if he you had know a thing song. called yeah. uh, uh, "Hello, Darling" and uh, uh, whatever. But he was on the Vaughn Records label, and so was the Burnett Brothers. And uh, and uh, uh, a great, a great entertainer. But he was out of Memphis, <clears throat> and uh, but just so much talent came through that little little theater now this we're, we're talking about uh, 55 and it was like i say called the dixieland jamboree and uh, my goodness held about 300 people and we had the balcony for the african americans to set in you know uh mm -hmm. upstairs uh, that's the way it was but uh, the last time that i had a chance to see elvison talk to him it was two weeks before he went to do the Tommy Dorsey show late 55. Mm -hmm. You follow me so far? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and, uh, I went with Johnny Cash, Elvis and, uh, David Houston. Okay. Now you got a picture. This is a 300 seat theater. And, uh, so, that's the three main artists and uh, had a chance to, uh, hail, hail I, that's what I worked there every weekend. So it was, a, it was an alley up to the buildings back to where the back door of the stage was. And of course I had to go back and there he stands by that black and pink Cadillac. I'll never forget it. Cannot remember the conversation except you got a 16 year old talking to a 19 year old <laughs> fascinated by him, you know? So mm -hmm. I, Lord, I would love to have some pictures, but in those days, everybody didn't have cameras like we have nowadays that film everything yeah. that happens, you know, but that was, but that was two weeks before he went to New York and exploded after that. So I, but anyway, let's move on. The last, <clears throat> the last, um, 10 or 12 years, I've worked with a little group here in Chicago called Iron Horse. It's a, a, a little group of twin brothers on guitar and bass, and I always keep a fantastic drummer. And, uh, and uh, just a, a super group. <clears throat> and they're managed by their mother, Loretta, who happens to be in the hospital today. And we hope she's watching this and hope she gets a feeling better because uh, the wife and I and her and her husband are going to Reno here in about a month. And uh, so <laughs> but anyway, she loves these kids and I want to show you their pictures. And we just did a thing that's on YouTube and it's called, they're called Iron Horse. Let me get it all over here where you can see, everybody can see them. But they're, what, and they're, they're uh, all early thirties, you know, and for them to play for an old part like myself, they uh, they sure know how to play it, and <clears throat> and they're great people, and I enjoy working with them, you know. And so I just want to give a big hello to them. That's yeah, that's great. Uh, you sent me the link uh, to watch the video, and yes, uh, did you yeah. watch it? Yeah, Did that was a, a great show, and yes. it was good to see some some like Ken Ken Marty, oh, um, you know, a good Ken, friend of mine. You know Ken? Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I think you told us that. Yeah, yeah. and uh, Rose and the Ribbits, 
And, uh, oh, uh, just a great show. But we, we've been doing that show for the last 10 years at a big school. But this year with the pandemic, we uh, mm -hmm. they brought us into a studio to do it. I want to show you a very quick picture of a couple of very special friends, Dave Travis and Billy Lee Riley. See, can you see that good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's all there. Yeah. <laughs> Made that right. Friend. And then here, here's one of my favorite people, Norval Phelps. Oh my! God. Let me get this picture up here. Where I'm, yeah, it's uh, always in the wrong direction. Yeah, uh, okay, it's, it's sideways. Okay, uh, it's there you see. mirrored. Yeah, Norval. What, what a, a talent! Wonderful. Yeah, what yeah. a wonderful talent he is, and, and of course. One of my favorite people is, you know who this is, Charlie Gracie. Charlie Gracie, yeah. yeah. Oh, he's a he has a big following in uh, in Europe, and and then there was an old boy down in Louisiana. that's one of the greatest drummers you'll ever want to work with, called Warren Storm. You know mm -hmm. the name? Yeah, I know the name, but I. Mm -hmm. I, I I, Warren, I, I don't know him like uh, Warren played on the, uh, uh, the George yeah. Paulus CD is a rockabilly with him here's another one with another special friend Carl Mann when mm -hmm. he was young and we're going over here when he was younger see that yeah everybody knows Carl and blue just lost him here a little while ago and uh, our good friend Jimmy Dale from Phoenix and Carl and we did a show in England and and uh, and uh, Rocky Burnett, but here's one I think you'll enjoy. It's from 1960 at the Memphis Zoo. Now check this one out, will you? Are you ready? Uh, check out that young Hayden Thompson. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't oh even recognize him. <laughs> the guns and the whole bit. <laughs> and, if you talk about somebody who thought they were special, boy, boy, boy. <laughs> it was a long time ago. But anyway, you know, we're how much time we have left? Uh, let's do maybe uh, 10 more minutes. All right. And do we have any we have, more questions? We have any more questions? We have, uh, let's see. <laughs> um, um, let's go. Oh, that's, that's While some, you're figuring that out, let me say hello yeah. to her. I want to say hello to some good friends over there, okay? Like yeah. Alex, they're in, in uh, Munich, Robert yeah, and Barbara there. in Munich, uh, Sebastian and uh, Axel and all the guys and Christina. We, after going over there since 84, we <clears throat> made an awful lot of friends and uh, and um, I here one thing I, 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 I I've got my list here, but uh, uh, our friends in uh, in France at uh, uh, Good Rock in the Night, uh, Jackie, Jackie and Lillian, uh, oh. they're talking about a show next year, and they're talking about uh, bringing me over. I hope the hope the situation gets where we can, and of course oh. with. Uh, Tom Ingram in uh, Vegas in September. I hope that works out. But I want to talk about the couple of minutes here, my friends at uh, Blue Light Records over in Finland, Mika and all the boys. Mm -hmm. And uh, over the last 12 years, I've had uh, four CDs with them and, uh, and uh, just uh, super musicians, super friends. And, uh, and it's on the internet if anybody want to check it out and, and maybe buy a copy of whatever, but had some great records with them. And they're talking about something else in the future, but we'll, you know, time will only tell. And my latest thing here, I definitely don't want to forget this. My good friend, Dave Travis just put out Mississippi Rockabilly Man. And it's on the internet. You've heard it. It's a collection of things from 1954 right up to uh, 2007, and uh, he 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 did a production that uh, is is top class. Dave Travis and Stomper Time Records, and that's on the internet. 
if some of the fans would like to check it out and want an order copy. So I'm trying to get all this in. And uh, like I say, we're doing the Vegas thing. And uh, and uh, I don't want to forget the one thing here you hadn't mentioned. The boy from Tupelo, the CD, uh, the CD I made for Sunjay back in 90. It's yeah. a tribute to Elvis. It was a tribute. It was a, probably a many, many tributes. But this thing, I had so many, uh, uh, so much uh, response on it, not to sell any records. So what you're doing, you're talking to a guy that, uh, you know, been around like so many other guys, made a lot of good records, and uh, just never quite got that damn door open, you know, but... Uh, mm-hmm. But whatever, uh, because of a lot of nice people, you know, still hanging there. Yeah. So, um, my girlfriend, Steffi, she wants to know, do you have any uh, uh, funny stories from backstage or on stage or on tour? Do you have a favorite story to tell? From <laughs> Well, I, I, very briefly here, I can tell you the, <laughs> in 56, when I, I had, first started on the road, I, uh, <laughs> we, we, you know, being a bunch of old country boys and we had the nice car and the trailer and the whole bit and traveling with the movie and, and the local newspapers and the Tupelo Daily News. And they did a nice big story on uh, the success of this young guy from the, the country out there in Boomville, Mississippi. And, and so, Oh, uh, the guy that was my manager at that time booked me into the local theater there and held about 400 people. So it was like they are bringing back the, the young, the up and coming star, you know, to, yeah. okay. The place was packed. <clears throat> Excuse me. Place was packed. The balcony was full of our African-American friends. So, Place was packed. The, per- the show was perfect. Walked out on the stage and I hit mama, mama, mama and crossed those legs and tore the seat of my pants out. <laughs> right in front of the first 12 rows of the theater. One of the most embarrassing things. <laughs> and I, I had put my guitar down between my legs and walked off the stage <laughs> and changed pants with my manager, which was about two sizes smaller than I was. And I went back out and performed the show. But uh, that's one of the things that I will live with. I will always remember. And there's a, there's a few things like that, but you wanted yeah. one. So if that's, you want to... You wanted a good one. I gave you a good one. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> let, let me let me say a quick hello to my good friend down in Pittsburgh, Mike Mexer, a uh, very dear friend, uh, rockabilly singer, and also Bob Greenspan over in Utah, and they're all watching the show today, and and uh, so many people over there in Europe that I'm sure I've missed, and like I said, I think I mentioned Axel before, and and all mm-hmm. the guys in Finland and Sweden that I've worked with. And of course, Dave Travis has been a dear friend. And and you know what? And of course, I showed you the picture of Roland. And, but what an opportunity this has been, and I've enjoyed it. And uh, Georgia, uh, here, you said, I'm gonna bring Georgia over. She wants to say hello to all of her friends. Georgia, see, how, see what I mean? I don't know if you're married or not, but you, okay. <laughs> you see her good? Hello, say Georgia. Hello. I haven't even good. combed my hair. Say hello. <laughs> good to see you. Hello. hello. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks and, for bringing and, her and, on, and, onto the internet. <laughs> had it been for her, I'd have been talking to you on the telephone because she's the, mm-hmm. she's the, uh, she's the glue behind the uh, wheel here, you know, but, uh, uh are we uh, one story about what? Roland, about the, when you're talking. okay how much more time do we have well, maybe one story then I, I have the quiz question where people can uh, win something you know yeah uh, and uh, and then uh, after that we, we just uh, you know see if there's one other question and 
and then we can call it a night or a day for, for you. Oh, we could talk for another hour, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's I got to say it's been been delightful and and I know I missed a lot of people that like to say hello to, but uh, whatever. Go ahead. Yeah, well, it, it's it's okay. hard to to get everybody in. <laughs> oh yeah, but one yeah. Thing, one. Okay, now you said you knew Roland. You you met Roland. In your email, you said something about his his dry sense of humor, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, on this new CD on Stumper Time with Dave Travis, I flew down to Memphis and to uh, cut that particular song with a friend of mine called Billy Harden here mm -hmm. in Chicago. He was cutting a record at Sun Studio. They wanted me to come down and do a couple of numbers. So we... So flew down to do this, and uh, and uh, and before I say anything else, I want to throw out a big, big hello to my good friend Jimmy Van Eat, which is a big part of the Sun scene. And I yeah. hope someday you can have Jimmy on your show because yeah, I, I Jimmy, so too. Yeah. Jimmy was there. He and he'll tell it straight, and and I hope the time comes you can use it. But getting back to the session I did at this particular time, I was going to do uh, Jerry Lee's It'll Be Me. Now, you heard that, right? You got the yeah. new CD. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Now, put me over in the booth. Of course, Roland and I always kidded a lot, you know, but he, he had a dry sense of kidding, you know. <laughs> so he's in the board. So we went through it once, sound pretty good. And he said uh, something like, well, let's take one more take of that, you know. Now up in Finland, they call me, at Blue Light, they call me one one take Thompson, you know. <laughs> Which is, you know, I always thought was funny, but whatever, you know, some people, sometimes it goes perfect the first time. You yeah. do it 25 more times and it won't work out. But whatever. In this particular case, he said, let's do it one more time. And I I said on the mic, I says, I'd like for a note to be made that I did it perfect the first time, but Roland <laughs> screwed up. So now <laughs> I'm going to have to do it a second time. And he I'll never forget that look of, uh, he wanted to laugh. He knew I was kidding, but it was a fun, we all had a good laugh. <laughs> and I'm still laughing here today, and it was 15 years ago, you know, but that's, that's, but he was a wonderful fella, wonderful guy, wonderful guy. Anyway, what else do we have? Um, let's do the, the quiz question. So, um, if you paid attention, that, that should be easy f for you. Um, let's uh, bring in the trailer here. I'm winning now. I'm winning now. Okay, so here's the question. And uh, Axel, you won the last two times, so maybe uh, <laughs> uh, give the others two or three seconds. So, um, what year was uh, uh, Hayden's fair lane, the red and white fair lane, which year was it made? The red and white what? Uh, that, uh, the, the fair lane. Uh, that's, uh, the question is not for you, it's for the, for the other guys who are, who are watching. Uh, and I just wanted to know um, uh, which year was it made, your, your fair lane that you owned, you know? Oh, the and fair lane, this, the fair lane. This, yeah, this is, this is not for you. Don't answer it. <laughs> oh, okay. But, okay, we, we, but that's what you're saying, the car, the yeah, fair lane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, we got, your, okay, all right, got it, got it, got it. We got a winner. We got a winner. Okay, it's, it? it's Dylan. Dylan is yeah. the, the, the piano player. He's got 1956. Is he's absolutely right, and believe me, <laughs> boy, 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 was I it was a beautiful car, 
1956 Fairlane Ford. And like I say, I, I spent a lot of time writing that song. A lot of stuff. <laughs> but I appreciate Dylan calling in. And uh, I, I think we're running out of time. Thank you so much for the opportunity. And Georgia thanks you. And and you and Georgia have become real pen pals, you know. I <laughs> noticed all, all your emails are directed to Georgia. So it's both of you. We, yeah. We yeah. hope to meet you sometime in the future. And like I say, I going so back too. to my my latest CD on blue on uh, Stomper Time. Yeah, I, I was uh, just I was just getting the uh, the address again. So if you want to order Hayden last CD, you can get it on Stomper Time uh, dot com, and uh, it's really worth it. It's a good mix out of it, uh, the fifties recordings the 60s recordings and then uh, some of the stuff you did later in the uh, was it even the 80s some some from the 80s some there? of it came up yeah. to 207 yeah yeah from yeah. 54 uh 54 up to 207 and then uh, of course blue light put out the boomville mississippi flash which mm -hmm. uh had a combination of 1990 uh 96 and uh i'm sorry 84 90 96 it's like 32 songs of some of the best that i've been able to, to record and uh and uh i and i apologize for not getting that big hit record that i wanted all the years <laughs> but it just didn't happen but you know what people like you make it worthwhile Thank you. Well, well, it was definitely uh, you scored some big hits for many of us. I mean, uh, you know, like as I said, uh, was brought up in East Germany. I was, you know, and then once the wall came down, I heard rock and roll, rockabilly, and uh, love my baby, and I fell in rock with some of the first Sun songs I heard, and just uh, changed my life completely. And now we're sitting here and talking to each other, so it's it's. You, you see what what a big influence he had, you know, with recording all those songs. Well, that's very nice, and and two people I would I got to throw them in here is little mm -hmm. Herbie Crystal, Herbie, you know Herbie, yeah, big Herbie help from Lübeck. to Herbie yeah. and Rolf, Rolf, you know Rolf the bass man, Rolf Summers, Rolf Summers, Rolf Sum yeah, and uh, Axel and all the boys, and and let's hope that uh, things get better and we can get back over there and do a few more shows with some of my favorite people like Wildfire Willie and uh, uh, Johnny and the Rocco's and so many, you know, you're talking about 35 years, I've had a chance to meet and work with so many great bands and George and I, uh, we've just enjoyed every minute of it and thank you very much. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. I know it, it's it's pretty tough <laughs> with the, everything, the, the technical side of it. And uh, I appreciate that we can do it uh, via the internet. And I hope to meet you soon in Chicago, near Chicago. Yeah. Thank you, my friend. And uh, when you get all organized here and you can give us an email, and let us know how you felt about the show, okay? I will, definitely. And right now, my wife is making... I got to tell you, I wish you were here. She's making a great big pork roast with potatoes <laughs> and green beans. And uh, the old man's just going to eat like he was 20 years old again. Okay. <laughs> okay. You're yeah. in Chicago, bon, bon you got a, you, if you're ever in Chicago, you got a, you got a room and a meal on us. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, I really bye appreciate bye, it. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. Thanks play. everybody for, for tuning in. All Everybody uh, appreciate your questions and your donations. And thank you very much, Hayden Thompson. Thank you. And Georgia. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>